Yes, hello there. Uh, my name is André Lövestam. I'm CEO of Swipe, a biometric fintech company. Sandeep. Well, hi, everyone. Hi, André. And um, my name is Sandeep Gomes. I head up the global payments platform business at FSS, and I'm based in India. Very so, nice gentlemen, so, gentlemen, maybe if we start with Sandeep, uh, why are FSS and Swipe partnering? Why partnering, I think, Luis, yeah, okay. I've always been a firm believer about collaboration. I see that collaboration is the key to success. And in today's world, when you look at the payment space, right, there's such a lot of evolution happening that it's impossible for any one company to basically say that we've got a stack that meets the requirements of everyone. So partnerships are definitely very important and the key to success. A little bit about both our companies, right? So FSS is a global cards payment solutions provider, and we offer a complete state-of-the-art card issuance platform across card and transaction lifecycle management. And what I see Zwipe doing, Zwipe provides a complete biometric payment card solution, which brings in the innovation required to create a completely whole new way to pay, especially in the context of today's world. So I believe it's essential that we both partner together to bring complementing solutions that create a complete end-to-end -end biometric offering to the market. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, we, we are truly honored and, and proud to partner with a company as prominent as uh, FSS, uh, being the largest uh, processor in, in, in Asia and one of the big uh, respected players in the, in the world of payments. Uh, and as you say, I mean, we are offering uh, biometric uh, technology to offer that into payment cards uh, for the benefit of the consumer and society in general. So gentlemen, um, how exactly are biometric payment cards creating new business opportunities for, for issuers? Um, Sandeep, from our perspective, from FSS's perspective. Sure, Louise, thank you. Uh, so the way I see the opportunities getting created in the market, right? There's a need that is being created in today's world. So when we know, when we talk about the world in today's context, it's changed dramatically, it's changed significantly over the last 18 to 19 months, right? What with COVID hitting us, pandemic upon us, the world as we know it has changed. There's a new normal everywhere. And that's so very true for payments as well, right? So when you look at payments, what was considered at one point in time as saying the given norm is now no longer the given norm. Things have changed. Card present, people would always say that card present is something where you go and tap your phone or pay by a post standing in front of a, uh, of a cashier was the way to pay. Digital commerce was actually slow on the uptake. But what has happened over these last 18, 19 months, digital payments, the way we know it, have actually sort of leapfrogged the card present payment space as well. So what has happened in today's world, the, the, forms, the form factors like e-commerce, UPI, scan to pay, these are the ones which have really started making a lot of positive noise in the market and have leapfrogged their way into becoming, in, into growing at a much faster pace than traditional payments. So what I would say is that this particular world that we live in have created new opportunities, both from a card acceptance perspective and from a card issuance perspective as well. Issuers, in my mind, would actually do very well uh, to offer a solution to their customers which say that in addition to speed, simplicity and security, we also are concerned for your safety. So here's a solution that we bring to the market which allows you to perform your payment in a card present environment or going forward in a card not present environment as well without physically touching the physical point of sale terminals. So the touchless experience that we talk about, right? I think that is the key things that issuers would do well to play on. And uh, from a customer perspective, I think the customer really would see significant value because here they have complete control of their card at all points in time. The card is not being handed over to the cashier. All the customer is doing is simply holding the card, inputting his or, or rather placing his fingerprint on the biometric reader on the card and completing a transaction. Below flow limit, above flow limit, doesn't really matter because once the transaction is done, it's, it's treated as a standard contactless payment transaction. So I believe uh, the opportunity, the real opportunity for the issuers is to create a differentiated offering in the market, which allows 
uh, Anuku, which basically allows customers uh, to be safe when they transact and merchants to also benefit from the same safety as well. So that is what I believe are the biggest opportunities that would really come in by introducing biometric payment cards into the payments ecosystem. Andre, I see you are nodding emphatically. <laughs> I am, yes, yes. I, I, I totally agree with what uh, Sandeep is saying. I think that for issuers, um, it's all about taking care of your customers, right? The consumers. Uh, and we've done extensive uh, consumer research in many, many, many different uh, markets, um, uh, confirming that uh, consumers have a, a very strong uh, wish for uh, biometric payment cards. In the UK, for example, 77% uh, of consumers said that they wanted their next, uh, their next payment card to be biometric. And why is that? Well, as you were alluding to, it's all about the various benefits. First of all, there's convenience of having a very speedy and consistent uh, transaction and user ex experience, both above and below the uh, transaction limit. Then there's a security element because you can alleviate all kinds of concerns around misuse of lost and stolen cards and also skimming, which is something that um, uh, concerns consumers. Uh, and then there is also the coolness factor of having the latest and greatest, something new and in innovative. But as you say, more than more than ever after COVID-19, hygiene has become a very important factor. People do not want to touch uh, shared surfaces, like, for example, the pin pad on a on a payment terminal, and therefore uh, exposing yourself to risk of infection. So all of these factors are uh, addressed with a biometric payment card. And due to this very strong demand for the product, the issuer can actually not only take very good care of their customers, but they can also actually um, open up new revenue streams, uh, charging for the card, for example, uh, an annual fee, um, uh, and or just to make sure to, to really attract new customers and to um, uh, uplift the loyalty of your existing customers. And clearly there are potentially the, you know, the merchants are maybe saying, what are the implications for me? Um, is there a drastic change at the point of sale, for example? Maybe André, if you'd like to answer that one first. Yes, when it comes to the point of sale for merchants, um, you know, the benefits are are basically that uh, the transactions will go faster, meaning that uh, queues will be reduced. Uh, and also that, uh, of course, there is um, uh, no risk of, of misuse. The, the, the card holder will always be the owner of the card. So I think those are the major uh, benefits. Uh, Sandeep, do you have anything to, to add to that? Spot on, Andre. I think that's absolutely spot on. In fact, uh, the key benefits for the merchants definitely is like sp speeding up the transactions, speeding up the queues, driving a lot of throughput. I think that is what the real merchant uh, merchant ready wants to do. But I think also th from an implication perspective, I think this basically right on the same rails as an existing setup that is there with the merchants today. So banks and merchants have invested in contactless NFC terminals, which are all there today, right? And they have card present limits, uh, card present limits, as well as above flow limit transactions which happen. So uh, the rails have been laid. So from an implications perspective, I don't think there's anything negative. It's only a positive here because the way it would be is that the same terminals that are there currently can be used to perform the regular contactless transactions as well as the biometric payment authenticated transactions as well. Because what happens is that the authentication, right, the, through your solution is entirely taking place between the live fingerprint and the fingerprint stored on the card itself. So that full authentication journey has been taken care of. It's like a match on card kind of technology that is there, which gets then transmitted as a complete message packet to the point of sale terminal. And the merchant doesn't need to change anything. The transaction goes as is. So I believe that is a significant value which is there from a merchant perspective as well. And, and just to cite the EMV Co, right? We are all governed by the EMV Co standards. So way back in 2017, I believe, EMV Co had established uh, biometrics as, as a new CVM. So we've seen 
uh, online pin, offline pin, signature, and all these pieces were CVMs. Now, biometric is also a CVM, which has come in there and which is recognized by all the card networks. So biometric authentication actually gives you security. You alluded to talking about security, right? So once the biometric has been validated and authenticated and the transaction has been processed, that gives that much more benefit to the merchant in terms of having a secure transaction that they have processed. So that's another value add which I just wanted to call out here. Exactly. And, and, and you know, we also are addressing a wider societal benefit. I mean, I think that uh, the, the, the benefits of, of um, frictionless uh, transactions is very good. Um, the societal benefit of um, infection risk reduction is very good. Correct. But on top of that, in our partnership, we're also um, targeting another societal benefit that I feel is really important. And that, of course, is, is financial inclusion. Because unfortunately, there is a link between poverty on the one hand and exploitation on the other. Uh, the middleman comes in and, and, and takes uh, money from a, a payment stream that should be safe. And um, I know from, from various uh, sources that uh, up to 20 to 25 percent of the, of the funds that are intended to reach uh, targeted people, pay, uh, poor people, for example. You know, it could be food stamps, it could be prepaid cards, it could be social welfare or, or disbursement of pension, whatever, uh, that these are leaked by, by middlemen. Now, biometric payment cards, of course, empowers and protects uh, the owners of the cards, the cardholders the ones who are supposed to get these money. So that way also eliminating the, 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 the leakage. So it's about empowerment, protection, and, and also uh, inclusion. And with regards to financial inclusion, we're seeing a, a lot of the markets um, are very dependent in this area on mobile. Um, maybe if I could just get your views in terms of how, how will this um, fit alongside um, mobile? Commerce. Well, um, let let me just comment that um, uh, when when you say um, mobile, I, I I'm not sure I can comment on that in the context of uh, inclusion, though, Louise. I think um, I think yeah, I think that what we're looking at is is where you know sometimes biometric cards are perceived as being expensive, um, and that can hinder adoption. Um, particularly where in, in certain emerging markets, um, they're mobile first. So they're looking to use that, um, at, particularly at the point of sale. So maybe Sandeep. Sandeep, could yeah. you comment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Absolutely fine. Uh, so I see it. So, uh, so I think uh, both very, uh, and okay, they're very conflicting if you look at it. On one hand, we are talking financial inclusion. On the other hand, we're talking about expenses, right? Uh, with uh -huh. biometric cards. See, biometric cards, the way I see it, uh, so let me take this question in two parts. So one piece is the card itself. Yes, it's a new technology. It's a new card that's coming out there. But obviously, the, the costs far, uh, are, well, are far lesser than the benefits that we will get out of the entire proposition. Taking you back a few years ago, right, when chip cards started replacing Max Stripes, Max Stripe cards, at that point in time, Everybody would say that, oh, the Max Type card does exactly what it's meant to. Why do I need to migrate to a chip? And at that point in time, we had exactly the same kind of discussion saying that transaction, why would a bank invest in a, well, a $5 card versus a 50 cent card and so on and so forth, right? But gradually, we realized along the way that the value that the chip card brought in from a security perspective, from a usability perspective, actually far outweighed the cost that we use to invest in the plastics. And I'm sure the similar uh, the, and over the similar life cycle is going to be there from a biometric card perspective as well. There is going initially, yes, it could be seen as being expensive, but the use cases are something that every bank would be looking at, saying that to answer the financial inclusion story, there could be a complementary play there uh, that the bank could come out with. There could be the mobile phones which are there for uh, the financial included sector, but then possibly if you have a different sector of customers, for example, students, I'm just thinking, who, who have mobile phones, plus who like to carry their cards as a cool factor as well, right? Because as a student, if you have 
a card which has been provided to you by your parents. It's your, it's a cool factor. When you go and say, hey, I've got a card as well. It's not like everybody's paying by mobile. And then when you use your biometric on that card as, as well, it actually sort of creates a newness of the complete experience. So I believe there'll be a complementary experience that would be there in the beginning. But gradually along the way, I see that biometrics would then become the new norm, the way we see chip as having taken over completely. So I think that's what uh, we need to be thinking of from a future perspective. So expensive, yes, but the value is a lot more. I, I totally agree, uh, Sandeep. That was very well said. And um, I think that um, when it comes to biometric uh, payment cards, of course, relatively speaking to a mobile phone, they are much, much, uh, much uh, cheaper, of course. And uh, in most markets, we're also seeing a willingness uh, to pay for these uh, uh, cards. And um, uh, I think that, uh, you know, with our thanks to our technology, the, the single silicon solution, we will be able to bring the cards down to a cost of some $10. And even when, um, for example, chip and pin was introduced and also when contactless were introduced at the very beginning, they were about uh, a factor of five times more expensive than their predecessor. And then when volumes increase, the costs uh, go down. So I really don't see that as a, as a hindrance anymore. Uh, the cost of the card has come down to a level where it can take off uh, in mass volumes. And I also believe that over time, biometrics will become as ubiquitous in cards as they currently are in mobile phones. And I, I think fully agree there. And I think maybe just to wrap this up, I think there's the, the proof of the pudding is actually and maybe Andre, if you could give us a little bit of a demo, just to demonstrate just how how easy this really is. Well, the, the, the cool thing about uh, biometric payment card is that even the counters for, for example, for the number of transactions before you have to authenticate or the um, uh, uh, value of um, um, uh, the accumulated value of transactions. Sure. Uh, all of those counters are in a way um, circumvented and eliminated because every transaction that you do with a payment with a biometric payment card is actually authenticated. So I have this uh, biometric payment card uh, here. It's with a fingerprint uh, sensor. And I will now try to do uh, a, a transaction live for you here, which is on a test terminal. It emulates perfectly the uh, real life uh, transaction. The only uh, difference is that no money changes hands. Um, the, no the Norwegian transaction cap is 500 kroners. So let me try a much larger number. I will try 50,000 kroners, 100 times the transaction limit. Uh, it's now ready and I hold the finger on the fingerprint sensor and I tap. And then the transaction goes through and it's accepted. That is fast. That is fast. It is. Fast. It, is it is virtually as fast as with uh, an, an, an unauthenticated, just normal contactless card. Super. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, I think, as I said, proof is in the pudding. So <laughs> that was a very nice, sweet, sweet way to, to end this interview with you both. Gentlemen, I'd like to thank you on behalf of FSS. And um, yeah, as you say, a new chapter for contactless and uh, a new chapter for certainly for, for card acceptance. So thank you both, both very, very much. Thank Andres, it's been a pleasure. Much. It's a pleasure talking to you and look forward to doing business together. Thank you very Absolutely, much. Absolutely, Sandeep. Uh, we're delighted to, to work with FSS and uh, look forward to a long, good collaboration. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.